Hello world, this is Tommy Haywood coming to you from Leesburg, Florida, the lakefront city in the Sunshine State. It's 82 degrees on the way up to 90. This is Thursday, June the 11th, 2020. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Richard Nixon once said, quote, I know you think you believe you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is exactly what I meant. Now, in case you didn't get that, let me repeat it. Quote, I know you think you believe <clears throat> you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is exactly what I meant. End quote. If you, if you understand that, you probably need some professional help. The fact is, communicating is a difficult thing. I do not remember where I got the following information that I wrote in my Bible years ago, but it illustrates the difficulty we have in communicating a message to other people. There are six possible messages that can be conveyed when we speak. First of all, what you mean to say. Second, what you actually say. Third, what the other person hears. Fourth, what the other person thinks he hears. Fifth, what the other person says about what you said. And six, what you think the other person said about what you said. It's amazing we ever communicate anything to each other. Having pointed this out, I'm happy to say that the gospel of Christ is simple, easy to understand, and easy to communicate to others. But some complicate their communications by using big words that very few people understand. They let their education hinder their rather than help them when they communicate to others. You not only have to consult the Bible to see if they're preaching the truth, but you have to consult Webster's Dictionary as well. It's like the boy who graduated from high school and was going off to college. His father was proud of him and singing his praises and telling the boy he was going to do well. He was going to go to college and get educated and get out and find a good job and find a good wife to marry and get married and have a fine family. And the boy said, Dad... Don't count your chickens before they hatch. The boy went off to college and four years later was graduating. The proud father began to sing the praises of the boy again. And the boy said to his father, Father, don't calculate on your juvenile poultry before the proper process of incubation is fully materialized. He said the same thing before, but now he was educated. Brother Robert Jackson, my own personal mentor, used to say, Make the message simple so the youngest accountable person can understand it. If you use big words, the highly educated doctors and lawyers will understand it, but those who aren't educated won't. If you make it simple, the doctors and lawyers will understand it, and so will those who aren't. I've tried to follow this advice all the years that I've been preaching the gospel. Preachers would do well to learn this from the New Testament preachers as well, whose messages were always simple and easily understood. They never tried to impress people with their education. Most of them were not highly educated. They were earthen vessels into which the Lord had placed the simple gospel of Christ. They impressed people with a profound but simple message of truth. So let's examine, examine that simple message and see what they said. First, there were facts to be believed. One must believe in God and in Jesus as the Son of God, according to Hebrews 11 and 6 and John 8, 23 and 24. Jesus lived, died, was buried, was raised again, and was witnessed by eyewitnesses who put their lives on the line for preaching these facts, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. We believe in the resurrected Lord because of the overwhelming evidence of eyewitnesses who gave their lives to preach it. This was the simple gospel preached on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Second, there were commands to be obeyed. Having heard and believed the facts, one must repent of his sins and be baptized or immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins, according to Acts 2, 36 through 41. This was the response of 3,000 people on Pentecost when they heard that simple message. Third, there were promises to be received. Those who gladly received his word on Pentecost received remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2, verse 38. You can see this scene over and over again in the book of Acts, the book of conversions. Faith in and obedience to the gospel of Christ simply produced Christians nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. They were not hyphenated Christians, just Christians. When the simple gospel is preached, presented in the hearts of honest and good people, the results is always the same. To anyone who says this will not work today, my question is, why not? The gospel is too simple for a lot of people who prefer something other and some other way to be saved in some complicated organizational structure, uh, such as found in denominational churches, but not found in the Bible. 
People always want something complex and complicated as though God would be impressed with massive cathedrals and ornate church buildings and elaborate worship services and all kinds of political and social activities, none of which is authorized by the Lord in his simple gospel. We are required to do all by the authority of Christ in Colossians 3 and verse 17. Obeying the simple gospel of Christ is the only way to receive God's approval and God's blessing. Remember, search the scriptures, serve the Lord, and share the gospel with others. It's a message that's too good to keep. Till next time, this is Tommy Haywood wishing for you a pleasant good day.